Well, good morning. We greet you in the love of God and welcome you to the worship service here at Greater St. Paul Baptist Church, 896 South Adams Avenue in the Queen City of the Washita, Camden, Arkansas. Come on now and join us as we go into the worship service. Bless the Lord, everybody. Yeah. Come on, I said bless the Lord, everybody. In your home, in your car, wherever you are this morning, we want you to worship and praise with us. Come on and put your hands together for Jesus on today. Hallelujah. How many of you know that our God is everlasting? Yes, he endured forever. Hallelujah. Your love, we said I 
Our devotion and reading this morning is coming from Psalms 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. And into his gates with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his divine word. Amen. Shall we pray? Amen. Eternal and everlasting Father, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I come boldly before thy throne of grace in the name of Jesus, thanking your Father for letting us be your children. Thank you, Father, for being Albert, our Father. Oh, yes. And Father, because you're Albert, our Father, you are worthy to be praised. Yes. And we come this morning to worship and praise your most holy yes. name. Yes. Thank you, Father, Thank you. for another brand new day. Thank you, Lord. Now, Almighty Grace Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless the pastor of this church. Yes. Bless the First Lady, Almighty Grace Heavenly and Father. Personal. Bless this church family. Yes. Bless all churches that stand open in your name. Bless in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, there are many sick among us. We ask your Father, send forth your healing power, like we know that no one else can do but you and long. Father, there are many that have lost loved ones. Help them, Father, be able to stand, Father, in times like these. And hold on to your unchanging hand. Because, Father, you're able to give us strength to go through it all. Yes. We thank you, Almighty thank Grace Heavenly Father. Thank and you. Almighty Grace Heavenly Father, we come today. As the pastor come to us today with the divine yes. word of God, yes. we pray, Father, he will come once more again on the anointing of the Holy Spirit, speaking to our souls, Father. Speaking, Father, to our soul, yes. that the sin of man, Father, yes, may consider yes. his ways. Yes. Yes. Those backslidden in their ways, Father, we come back to the fold, Father. And the Christian, Father, we grow strong in thee. Hold it on, Father, yes. to your unchanging yes. hand. Yes. Now, Father, as the word of God go forward, Father, pray, Father, that the Spirit touch our hearts, our minds, and our soul. Yes. Father, we will say within ourselves, we must hold on, Father, yes. until the end come. Yes. Father, as the word of God go forth from the pastors from the throne of God, Father, we just pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus Amen. that everything will be all right, Father. Yes. That you touch us in such a way, Father, that the Spirit will move us, Father, yes. that we will see Jesus going up Golgotha Hill. We will see Jesus, Father, yes. as the blood stream down from him, falling to yes. Mother Earth, Father, knowing that every drop of blood, yes. Father, yes. had all humanity written in it. Yes. All our names were written in the blood of Jesus. And, Father, he just only said, as I go to the cross for the remission of sin, if you believe in me, if you believe in Calvary, yes. if you believe in resurrection morning, you shall yes. be saved. Yes. And, Father, we just say, we hold on to your one change in hand. Father, that when our time here on earth is no longer, Father, that we may be able to hear Gable as he sound the trumpet, a sound that never been heard on this side of the river of joy, a sound, Father, that will call those that dead in Christ shall rise first, and the rest of our Father shall be in hell to forever, forever be with you, Father. Oh, we want you to say, Father, well done, well done, thy good and faithful son. This yes. I pray in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Amen. 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 Don't stop there. Come on. If you believe in that, yes, we ought to be giving God praise yes. right now. Yes. It shouldn't stop. It shouldn't stop. You should be giving God praise. You should be clapping your hands. You should have a praise on your lips. Hallelujah. I love to lift this song in worship. We ask that you join in with us as we worship the Lord.
name of the Lord we greet you in the grace of God and in the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ we are truly thankful that God has blessed us with another worship opportunity to all of you who gather together to make up this assembly let's we thank God for the music ministry for for our musicians our technicians praise God for you thank you brother Deacon for the devotion 
Amen. Praise God for the young people that are in the vestibule. To all of those that make up this assembly. Thankful for Sister Franklin and for all of those that join us by way of the airways. Why don't you just tell God one more time. Tell him thank you Lord. Amen. Amen. As we prepare to worship this morning, a few quick announcements. I want to say first of all, I was blessed uh, with a phone call this morning. I heard the chairman mention it uh, during the time of our fellowship before service this morning on the conference call uh, concerning Deacon Davis. And Deacon Davis called me this morning. And I tell you, Cheryl, he sounds better than he sounded in a long, long time. Amen. His, his voice is mighty strong. And he says, I want my church to know that I'm on the way back. He, he's feeling much better. And so we're just praising God and thanking God for his healing ministry. We are praying for all of those who have been sick and uh, some, some otherwise shut in. We, we pray, uh, amen, for your strength in the Lord. We also pray for the Pace family as they celebrated the life of Brother James Pace on yesterday. Uh, we are praying for that family, uh, amen. And to all those that duty binds us to pray for, we continue to pray and lift you up. Certainly we are praying for our church uh, family uh, going through some stormy times with the damage done to our campus here we are praying about that and we ask for you uh, to join us in prayer uh, nevertheless so much to be thankful for and so we are praying together worshiping together praising God together and trusting him in all things there is a passage of scripture that is recorded in the 124th Psalm. And I want to invite your attention there to the 124th Psalm. Uh, as we solicit your prayers, uh, and turn our attention to God's word, great gracious God. Hide us all now, God. Hide us behind the cross of your will, God. Let every heart, God, let every mind be stayed on you. In the name of Jesus, we pray now your presence and your power as we dive into your word, seeking, Lord God, what is your will for our lives. We come to give you the glory. Now in Jesus' name we pray. And every heart said amen. amen. Very familiar psalm, Psalm 124. I want to lift um, just those opening verses um, before you. And of course, um, I pray that you will continue to stay with me as we uh, journey through a few of the Psalms that surround uh, this 124th Psalm. Verse 1 says, If it had not been the Lord who was on our side. And then the psalmist says, Now may Israel say, That's a call for you, congregation, to say it together. Verse 2 If it had not been the Lord, who was on our side when men rose up against us. I want to stop right there with those two opening verses. If it had not been for the Lord, we say, who was on our side. I want to use for a sermon titled for a few moments this morning, my brothers and sisters, bow your head and close your eyes. That's a sermon titled, Bow Your Head and Close Your Eyes. At the close of our last youth meeting, Michelle, you may remember, oh, after we had shared with the Black History Jeopardy and had a wonderful time celebrating with the young people, it is common uh, that one of the young people will, would lead us in prayer. And on 
um, the last youth meeting, it was it was the young men's turn, and Brother Calvin Deacon, Calvin very deliberately said, bow your head and close your eyes. And then that young man went on to talk to God. Deacon Bennett, he talked to God in a very real way. You could tell that he was speaking from the sincerity of his heart. He talked to God as a representative of our youth department and he prayed on behalf of the young people. He talked to the Lord. He didn't use so much church language. He talked to God. He thanked the Lord for being good. Some of y'all remember. He humbly asked God to search him. And the youth department. Oh, what a prayer. And then, and then my brothers and sisters, at, uh, last week at Bible study, um, on, on Wednesday afternoon, we, we had our Bible study and uh, Typically, the deacons will open the Bible study with a prayer on the conference line. And at the close, we ask some of our women to, to close us out in prayer. And one of our spirit-filled sisters got on that phone. <laughs> and she, she called from heaven. I'm telling you, there was, there was a shaking in my room. I know folks were getting happy on the phone because she fair talked to God. You know what she said? She said, bow your head <laughs> and close your eyes. I think it's something, something sacred about that. Uh, that formula. I think that, the, that the, those are more than just simple words. It's, there's, it's something that happens when we bow our head and close our eyes. Um, by this, or I should say these two occasions, I was Reminded that our journey with the Lord is never one dimensional. We don't simply step out and journey with God on a flowery bed of ease. We don't, we don't simply float away into the glory of the Lord. No, my friends, this Christian journey is filled with mountains to climb. And valleys to try. Um, sometimes our road is filled with good times. But the truth is every Christian knows that uh, every good time has a bad time. Sometimes our lives are filled with the joy of the Lord. But then there sometimes we have to deal with the sorrows of life. Sometimes we have victories in Jesus. So much so that we can't wait to get to church on Sunday morning to sing the song, Victory is Mine. <laughs> Victory is Mine. Victory today is Mine. But then there are the other times that we have to deal with life's defeats. Bow your head. And close your eyes. Can I say it again? That this journey with Jesus is not one dimensional. Here in this 124th Psalm. It's located in the midst of a series of Psalms. That are referred to as the Songs of Degrees. This 124th. And 24th Psalm, if you look at your Bible, many of your Bibles have that subscription under the song. It says, a song of degrees. 
A song of degrees began in the 120th Psalm where the psalmist talks about distress. And in that 120th Psalm, the psalmist says, in my distress, I cried unto the Lord and he heard me. Then in 121st Psalm, the 121st Psalm is another song of degrees. And in the 121st Psalm, the focus is on the deliverance of God. The psalmist says, I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. With confidence, the psalmist says, my help comes from the Lord. And then the 122nd song is a song of delight. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And then the 123rd Psalm is a song of devotion unto thee. I lift up my eyes, O thou that dwellest in the heavens. Behold, the eyes of thy servant are upon thee. That's a song of devotion. The 124th Psalm that we study today is a song of declaration. The 125th Psalm is a song of determination. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion. The 126th Psalm is a song of desperation. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams of the south. Now watch this that they may that so in tears shall reap in joy the 127th psalm is a song of dedication when the psalmist says except the lord build a house <laughs> the these songs amen these songs of degrees distress Deliverance, delight, devotion, declaration, determination, desperation, dedication. These songs of degrees, I like to refer to them as the steps of the saints. For that's what the psalmist is declaring. The psalmist is declaring that as children of God, things will not always be one dimensional. That you may, my brothers and sisters, that you might have distress one day. But hold on to the Lord. Because deliverance is sure to come. The psalmist would have us to know that there are times in our lives that we experience great delight. Store up though. Because in your delight, you need to develop devotion. You're going to have to develop some stick to itness. These songs of degrees are different levels that the Christian soldier uh, must go through. Martin Luther, the reformer, said that there, are, uh, there were 15 steps by which the priest ascended into the temple. And Martin Luther said that each one of these psalms represent one of the steps that the priest would stop and sing and declare unto the Lord the glory of God. By way of these songs of degrees. Now my brothers and sisters for this short time this morning, I want to invite you to join and with me and focus on this 124th Psalm. Uh, again, the Psalm is said, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, it is C.H. Spurgeon that declares that this 124th Psalm is a Psalm that reflects the incident in the scripture in First Chronicles chapter 13 where David attempts to carry the Ark of the Covenant back home. Uh, Spurgeon says that uh, in the 100, uh, uh, I'm sorry, in First Chronicles chapter 13, as the description is given concerning the journey with the Ark of the Covenant, David has been victorious in many battles and now he desires to bring the Ark of the Covenant back home. 
And the chronicler says that David and all Israel played before God with all their might, with singing and with harps and with psaltery and cymbal and with the cymbals and with the trumpets. They, they devoted themselves to the praise song. They prayed and they prayed with all their heart. As they desired to take the Ark of the Covenant back home. But they got it wrong. Even though they did it with all their heart, they got it wrong. Even though they played hard, they, they sung hard, they tried. But they got it wrong. And the record is in chapter 13, as they journeyed with the Ark of the Covenant, uh, the wagon that carried the Ark, hit a rock and it and it shook and else I reached out to grab the covenant and that's where he messed up because it was not his to put his hand on the sacred things of God what, what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying sometimes we, we try to get it right. Sometimes we mean to get it right. Sometimes it looks like we're doing the right thing. But God don't need us to help him. And so Spurgeon says that this 124th Psalm reflects the occasion upon which uh, they tried to carry the Ark of the Covenant back in and they got it wrong. The psalmist uses this um, if then situation as he discusses this 124th Psalm. If he says if. If is the difference between deliverance and disaster. Hear what it says again. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side. Maybe, maybe we can't, maybe we can't feel it because we haven't dealt with the then. So let me skip the end of if a little bit and go right to the then. <laughs> the psalmist says, uh, uh, then which represents the other side of if <laughs> the, the psalmist says then which represents the period when the men rose up against the children of Israel it says then it says then they would have swallowed us up quickly let me grab a hold of that, Sister McKinney. You hear what he said? The psalmist said, then they would have swallowed us up completely and quickly. That's one of the thens. But it's not only one then. He says then again. He says then the waters would have overwhelmed us. Oh, but that's not the only then. There is another then. He says then the stream would have gone over our souls. Then, my brothers and sisters, in this 124th Psalm speaks of the many enemies of the people of God who came to attack with bigger armies, who came to attack with better weapons, who came to attack with better strategies, who came to overthrow the people of God with horses and chariots. The then in the 124th Psalm speaks of a superior adversary. Maybe we can, maybe we can appreciate this Psalm a little better if we would be truthful about the fact that if it had not been for the Lord, the then would have wiped us out. I wish I had one or two people that know that the then in your life could have destroyed you. He, he says, um, he, he says, then the, then we would have been swallowed up. Then the waters would have overwhelmed us. Then the streams would have covered our souls. The, the then speaks to the adversary to which we have no control. Uh, it is suggested, my brothers and sisters, uh, that the psalmist here, as he speaks of the overwhelming waters, 
points to a period in the history of the children of Israel when they had been delivered but not developed. It speaks to a time on their journey, my brothers and sisters, when they faced troubled waters and had to pass over the troubled waters. And so the psalmist declares that one, that the waters would have overwhelmed us, probably pointing to the Red Sea, that if it had not been for God, they could not have resisted against Pharaoh's army and they would have been pushed out in the troubled waters and the troubled waters would have overwhelmed. I wonder if there's anybody here that can relate to troubled waters. Anybody here, my brothers and sisters, that have dealt with a time in your life when the flood waters seem more than you can bear? Anybody ever gone through a situation that was the waters were too rough? to swim, to trouble, to go across, no bridge, no ferry, no way out. And you can say like the psalmist said, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side. He said, talks about uh, the troubled waters, but, but not only does he talk, amen, about the overwhelming waters, the psalmist also talks about, amen, the streams. And if the troubled waters refer to the Red Sea, then the psalm suggests that the streams that the psalmist is talking about refer to the Jordan stream. That's what Sister Keaton was teaching us this morning in Sunday school. She was talking about a period when the children of Israel carried the Ark of the Covenant and they got to the Jordan stream and they had to pause there at the Jordan stream. They had to wait for God to give instruction. And there at the Jordan stream, I enjoyed that lesson, Sister Keaton. I enjoyed how you talked about Joshua took over from Moses, but it wasn't Joshua that was leading. It was the Lord that was leading and God drove them and God got them up to the stream. And God said, wait, before you cross, you got to get in order. <laughs> you you got to you got to get it right you got to get it in order and so god had uh, joshua to line up the priests line up the singers so that as they crossed over the jordan stream their crossing would be unto the glory of the lord uh, my brothers and sisters uh, as they crossed over jordan we know that the walls of jordan awaited them but God was with them. And so there was no enemy, no adversary that could hold back the people of God. If in this 124th Psalm I said again, if describes the difference between deliverance and disaster. So let me say it one more time. If it had not been for the Lord, if describes the, the difference between deliverance and disaster. So let me say it one more time. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. Wait, let me say it one more time. Uh, if is a descriptive term. It's a, it's a conditional clause. In other words, the if plays a very important part between deliverance and disaster. If it had not been for the Lord. Look at the psalmist's use of the negative. The psalmist said, if God hadn't been there I don't know who I'm talking to today but uh, but I believe that there's somebody that if you were in the sanctuary that uh, you would be willing to help me preach today I believe that there's somebody that can sing if it had not been for the Lord 
who was on my side let me take just a few seconds to ask all of those that know that the Lord brought you through you don't mind today let's take 10 seconds to tell God thank you Lord because if it hadn't been for you I never would have made it thank you Lord if it hadn't been for you my enemy would have overtook me if it had not been for you come on take a few seconds seconds and just tell God oh bless your name God oh glory to your name thank you Lord Jesus all right okay okay wait a minute wait that that's that group that's that group they used about 40 seconds they had six more seconds let me go to the other group here let me get the other group there is another group that don't realize that you need the Lord in order to make it through and if I'm talking to you and you have not realized that without God you're never gonna make it I want to talk to this other group that don't know that your money your power your position your prestige your friends your homeboys will never be able to see you through if I'm talking to you this morning come on and take 10 seconds and tell the Lord bless you Lord thank you Lord oh glory 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 to God thank you Lord if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side oh wait a minute wait a minute that I believe that I believe that group that didn't know the Lord <laughs> I believe they did a little better than the group that claimed to know the Lord. The group that know the Lord only used four seconds, but that new group blessed the Lord for about six seconds. Come on, let's let's all let's all get together. Come on, the ones that know Him and the ones that don't. If you know the Lord I want you to look up at that cross and lift up your eyes and reflect on Calvary I want you to be a witness to the one that don't know the Lord I want you to say thank you Jesus for that Thursday evening when you took that cross upon your shoulders and marched up uh, that rugged hill uh, with a cross uh, on your back thank you Lord he died mm. so that we will live come on you got two more seconds you got two more seconds he died on an old rugged tree but early Sunday morning he rose up from a cold cold grave this is what the psalmist says he's blessed he says bless the Lord who had not given us as prey to their teeth this is what the psalmist says the psalmist says our souls escaped as birds that have been trapped in the sparrow but recently released can you see the little bird the bird that's been trapped for a while and all of a sudden the door flew open and the little bird lifted up to fly away listen to what the psalmist says the psalmist says our help is in the name of the Lord who has made the heavens and the earth oh my brothers and my sisters with, with great joy I come this morning 
reflecting on those members of our church family who have been so powerfully inspirational a young man just crying out to God who gave instruction he says bow your head and close your eyes what powerful words because you know my brothers and sisters some of us are too proud to bow down some of us are too blessed to bow down some are too brave and too bold to bow your head but I'm thankful today that young Calvin he, he wasn't considering or concerned about those who were too high minded he simply gave instruction I, I can hear him say you bow your head <laughs> I hear Calvin say you bow your head you, you bow your head I don't know if he realized it but there was a blessing in the bowing and then Calvin said close your eyes stop looking around Stop worrying about who's looking at you. Close your eyes. Stop focusing on this worldly stuff, this earthly stuff. Close your eyes so that you can see the amazing grace of the Almighty God. You know, the, I've learned that two in the Bible is the number of confirmation, and so it was, it didn't amaze me too much when that following day, in our noon Bible study in the closing prayer that sister said bow your head and close your eyes I want to ask you to do that this morning I want to ask you to not be one dimensional I want to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes and as we bow all over this sanctuary and all over this viewing audience, as we bow, I want to ask you to take a moment to forget about yourself and meditate on those lost souls, those that don't know Jesus and the free pardon of their sin I want you to take a minute with your head bowed down and with your eyes shut tight I want to ask you to join me in calling out from the depth of your soul crying out Lord before it's everlasting too late that if there be any lost in my circle of associations God let it not be about religion let it, let it not be about church stuff God hear my heart cry out for them save them God shake them oh Lord before it's everlasting too late God touch them today Lord God that they may come out of the dark ways of the world and that they may yield unto you that they might confess that they are a sinner and then recognize Lord God you as our soul's savior and as our redeemer and hopefully by the power of our prayer by the power of our submission by the power of our petition somebody who's lost in darkness might see the marvelous light of Jesus that they may come calling Lord what must I do to be saved with bowed heads and with closed eyes Lord God you know what our nation and what this world is going through and God, we thank you right now for keeping us through the storm of this pandemic. 
And God, we thank you for using the scientists and the medical researchers. And, and God, we believe that you're about to bring about a cure. We give you glory and we give you praise, oh God. We see a day approaching, Lord God, where we will be beyond the other side of this pandemic. We give you praise, God. And we just pray now together, Lord God, with our heads bowed down and with our eyes closed, that on that day, when we step beyond the pandemic, that we will step forward with this testimony about how we got over that we will we will step forward lord god realizing that we're not here we've not been kept because we've been so careful we've not been kept because we've done all the right things but that we're here lord god by the power of your grace and your mercy let us step forward lord god as instruments of praise that we might lift up your name over the highways and the byways everywhere we go and lord god that we might with with a fresh and with a renewed spirit ask you to come into our lives and use us for the glory of your name thank you god thank you today thank you oh god thank you now if you will just come on join me in telling god thank you today thank you lord god thank you for all that receive your salvation thank you god amen thank you for these steps that you take us through as we journey towards your permanent presence i'm thankful today for everybody that makes up this fellowship thank you so much for all those that join us by way of the zoom amen brother oj smith i see you there i see you miss monica amen god bless you gary god bless you sister owens thank you so much for joining us by way of the zoom broadcast thank you deacon williams everybody that is that's with us all those that are in the sanctuary and all those that are viewing on the facebook all of our church family and all of our friends we're ready now to go down from this holy place we pray this morning that the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts has been pleasing to god we pray this morning that the songs of the music ministry lord god has made a way that somebody's hard heart might have been broken up that they may receive your spirit lord god and that they might surrender to your will and to your word we pray lord god as we prepare to go down from here that you would now dismiss us from this service but never from your presence but now may the grace of god the love of our lord and savior jesus christ and the sweet communion of the holy spirit May it rest, rule, and abide here now and forevermore. Come on, let every heart say amen. Say amen. Say amen. God bless you. God bless you.